So we've been looking for contacts between the Gaussens, these iron rich, metal rich veins where the geothermals are bringing water to the surface. And then the hydrothermals, the diapers, these evaporite deposits with this much more salt and gypsum rich mineralization. Little veins of evaporate here and here. And we can even come around the back and see some fairly clear banding. We've got a little vein of uh, gasogenous material in there. More evaporate up at the top there. Speaking about the idea that science is hard and not just something we read in textbooks, we're literally hanging off the edge of the cliff right now in order to get up here and see some of these permanent formations, things that are uh, look like the permanent structures in the rock right here, um, as opposed to all the debris that we can see easily. Ooh. So this is what we call an evaporite. Uh, where we can see that something has carried water through this rock um, and if you've ever been inside caves and seen things like flowstones and stalactites and stalact stalactites and stalagmites uh, you've probably seen this sort of little popcorn rock formation uh, we might have even done the popcorn rock formation in class depending on which class this is uh, but these are what we're looking for we're looking for rocks that have carried bits of iron to their surface uh, and then let that iron oxidize as it sits on the surface. But these are very, very fragile sandstones, uh, very fragile sedimentary rocks that Eloise is picking her way through right now. And we can see the entire hillside is covered with this stuff. So as we were walking across the bottom of the tundra down here this morning, we looked up and saw lots of bright, beautiful red rocks. Um, but the rocks that Eloise is gathering now are samples that she's actually pulled out of a solid mass of rock. Everything else is just compacted from the debris. Uh, so we're going to try and gather some samples. We'll take our GPS coordinates of exactly where we are. And then Eloise can add this to her map and say, yes, we definitively have Gossens here. Now, why are we climbing way up on this hill in order to look at these bits of evaporite? Uh, my, or gypsum and iron embedded in the rock uh, for the simple reason that Eloise is able to identify these from satellite photos uh, and the patterns that show up in the spectra on satellite photos are easily recognizable by her software or so she claims uh, so right now she's proving that the rocks that she identified on her software are in fact Gaussianus, um, and so she can then use that information to take a satellite photo of something like that outcrop up there from the orbit around Mars and say, hey, we've got the same types of mineral deposits down there. So that tells us that there is a giant vein of iron under here, at least from what we know of these Gaussian formations here on Earth. So we know that if we spot these things on Mars, we can say, hey, there's gonna be an iron deposit under there, which if you're planning on going to Mars and building a city, it might be nice to know that you've got some iron there that you can go shopping for. All of this to say, hey, at some point, you guys are gonna be looking at in school or maybe your university programs, a map of ore deposits on Mars and where we're gonna go start digging. Uh, and so you can thank Eloise for being able to identify <laughs> where those iron deposits are. So we're just recognizing that this goss in here looks very different from the side and the inside that Eloise was just sampling than what it looks like at the top. 
which is unfortunately what the satellite's gonna see. And from the top, that looks like a mix of white and black and red and all kinds of different things. But it's only once we get kind of under the skin here that we can see the evaporites, the gypsum, and the evaporites of the iron bearing minerals uh, that she wants to actually look at and sample. Just uh, looking around from the top of our mountain at the fog that has rolled in underneath us. Uh, but we got lots of great structures down here. So these are the Gossens we've been trying to study. Um, you can see all the weathered iron rock down there, all the oxidized iron. Um, and then the, the rock just kind of weathers in place until it crumbles and slides downhill in some mass wasting event. You can see the nose of that one there. Probably going to go any day now. Um, or it could still be there five years from now, who knows. But uh, certainly a lot of in situ weathering. Uh, and then eventually that stuff will say goodbye and the hilltop will be easier to climb the next time we're here.